What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Algebra One with Mr. Peters. In today's video, we're doing a polynomial review. So I'm gonna to touch on five basic concepts that you're gonna see very often when we talk about polynomials. Let's get started for today. This video is gonna be powerful because I'm showing you a lot of math tricks where we don't even really need math. So let's say we're answering this first question and it asks us to factor, right? Anytime you have multiple choice, guys, you have to use process of elimination, okay? You have to. So let's just start off, right? Number one, C cannot be the answer. If we multiply a positive number with another positive number, there's no way in the world we could get a negative sign. So that's gone. Now let's say I go up to A, right? So let's let's just let's remember this. When we multiply this, this outside term of what's inside the parentheses, we're supposed to get this as an answer. So when I look at 8x to the third y squared, when I multiply this back with 2xy, what this is going to give me is 16x to the fourth y to the third, right? Do you see this? There's a one here, one here. So that's automatically wrong, right? Now we get to the answer choice B and C. But you guys know that the type of factoring we're doing right now is greatest common factor. So we have to take the largest number that goes into both those numbers. And as a result, my answer choice is B. This would give me the same exact answer once I distribute it back. But the issue is four versus eight, right? The largest greatest common factor would be eight and not four. So please, when you guys are approaching these type of problems, use process of elimination and understand greatest common factor. That's how we were supposed to solve and break this down. And with that, we're going to go on to problem number two. In our next problem, guys, they give us basically two binomials and they're equal to zero. And they're asking us, what are the solutions to this basically quadratic equation? Guys, this is the same thing as a zero product property. So now that our factors, right, we had a trinomial and we factor it down to two binomials. So what we do is we set this equal to zero and we solve for x. So two plus three is equal to zero. I subtract three from both sides. We have two x is equal to negative three. Once I divide by two to get x by itself, I have x is equal to negative three over two. So that's my first x. Second one, we do the same thing. X plus six is equal to zero. We subtract six from both sides. X is equal to negative six. So when we go here and we look at our answers, D is not right because they're positive. C looks like it's gonna be the correct answer, right? B, we know three over two has to be positive. And then A, they flipped it and gave us the reciprocal two over three. So we know that's not right. So with these type of problems, guys, when it, the factor is set to zero, solve it and don't be lazy. Please don't be lazy. Don't just say, oh, and do it in your head because I see students get it wrong just because they just didn't work it out. Work it out and make sure you're accurate, all right? And with that, we're going to go on to our next problem. <laughs> when we talk about polynomials, guys, they're always going to give us a multiplication problem because they are betting on us to make a mistake. But before we get into this excellent box method that I love, let's start off with process of elimination. So this is what I used to do when I was in Algebra 1. You see our two constants? When we multiply those two, we're going to get 30. And that's the only constant we're going to have. So what does that mean? We know that the last number, the constant, number with no variable, should be 30. So when I look at A and B, they have a constant of 70. So bam, now we went from 25% chance of getting it right to 50. Please make sure you practice process of elimination. Now with this being said, we're going to do the box method, right? So the box method, I just love this method because I just think it's, it's just the greatest thing in the world. So we have 7x and 3, right? And we're going to multiply that by 7x squared, 3x, and then 10 I didn't draw the borders of my box, but you guys understand what's going on. And this is great for my students who have an issue with foiling. This helped me to understand foiling even better. That's why I practice it. So I'm going to multiply 7x times all three of these terms. 
I'm going to get 49x to the third, right? 21x squared. And then here, I'm going to get 7x times 10, which gives me 70x. Now I go back, I do the same thing with 3. 3 times 7x squared is going to give me 21x squared. 3 times 3x gives me 9x. And then 3 times 10 is going to give me 30. Now, the reason why I love this method so much is after you're done multiplying, right? It's so nice and pretty for us. Our like terms normally run diagonal. So here goes two like terms. And here goes another two like terms. So now we don't even have to really worry about what we're adding or the first and last term. So when I rewrite this in standard form, right, we have 49x to the third plus 21x squared plus 21x squared, that's 42x squared, that's gone. Let's see, this is 70 plus 9, which is going to give us 79x, and then that constant, nothing to add with it. So it just stays the same. And once we look at our last two answers, we know the answer choice is going to be C. So anytime you see we are multiplying polynomials, Please try this box method if you struggle with foiling. It's going to make it so much easier. And with that, let's go on to the next problem. Next problem, guys, we're dealing with simplifying expressions. So now we have a fraction where we have variables and exponents. And it, the polynomials are so challenging at times because of those properties of exponents. But I got you. So the first thing we need to understand is that when we divide, we're probably going to get a whole number. 28 divided by 7 is going to give us 4. So off rip, let's just cancel B out, right? Now what we need to know is that when it comes to the exponents, we are going to subtract. So let's break this down, right? So I know 28 divided by 7 gives me 4. Now, x to the fourth power, once we subtract 4 from 4, that gives me x to the zero power, which is equal to 1. I don't need to write one next to four because once we multiply, it's the same exact thing. So with that being said, I could eliminate this because X is not going to be in our answer. So now I'm down to two answer choices. Then I go to Y. Y to the third minus Y to the seventh is going to give me Y to the negative fourth. So I already know that Y, it's probably not going to be in the top part of this fraction. It's going to be in the bottom because of that negative exponent rule. And then when we go to Z, Z stays the same, right? So Z is going to be equal to Z squared. So let's put all of this back together. What does this say? So we have 4, X is gone, Y to the negative fourth times Z squared. This is our answer here, but we know we cannot have negative exponents. Anytime we have a negative exponent, we turn the problem into a fraction and we take that term that variable or that number, and we take its reciprocal. So now y to the fourth is going to come to the bottom, and my final answer should be 4z to the second power divided by y to the positive fourth. And if I'm not mistaken, this is answer choice c. So when we're talking about simplifying the expression and we're dealing with polynomials and fractions, remember the properties of exponents, because that is probably going to be the most challenging part. And now we're going to move on to the last problem of this video. Moving on to the last problem of this video, guys. We really hope you found this material helpful. If you have, just smash the like button for us. So we're looking at a parallelogram, right? And it tells us the perimeter is 6x squared plus 12x plus 4. That is what you, that's what, that is the answer once you add all four sides. Then they tell us the length of B is 3x plus 2x plus 1. So let's just write that, right? I'm visual. 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now they're asking us for A. Now the biggest reason why students get this wrong is because they just don't understand the concept of congruent sides. Meaning, if this B is 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, so is this side. So now I fill it in because we have to subtract to figure out what A is. So we know the perimeter is 6x squared plus 12x plus 4. And I'm going to subtract, right, side b from it. So when I add side b with itself, 3x squared plus 3x squared gives me 6x squared. 
two x plus two x gives me positive four x, and one plus one gives me two. Now remember, we're subtracting, so the signs of all three of these change. So six x squared minus six x squared is zero. 12x minus 4x is 8x, and 4 minus 2 is just positive 2. Hold on real quick, real quick. Oops, ah, I knew I made a mistake. This is 14. I'm so sorry. So this should be plus 12. So now, right, a lot of us are going to say, oh, Mr. Peters, I got the answer. It's C, right? And guys, that is wrong. This is the trick. Why is it wrong? You guys already know, but I'm gonna make I'm gonna tell you so you know. So look, they gave us a side of one b, right? So we added both the b's, then we subtracted it from the perimeter. What we have left over eight x plus twelve. This is what both sides of a should equal to when we add both of them. So what does that mean? To find out what each side is, we're gonna divide this by two. So once I divide by two, my answer will be four x plus six. And this would actually be our correct answer, which would be B. Now think about it. Once we add eight x plus 12, right? Plus three x squared plus two x plus one. And then we add three x squared plus two x plus one. We're gonna get this perimeter as an answer. So please don't fall for this trick. Remember that congruent sides are the same. So when you get your answer, you're probably going to have to divide it by two. And with that being said, our video is over for today. We thank you guys so much for joining Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters. Smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and leave comments for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel. Or if you had a question from today's video, thank you guys so much for joining us.